Well, it looks like it's that time of the year, guys. Winter is upon us. I want to sip on some bleach. The freaking leaves are falling. It's getting cold. It is hoodie and jeans weather, unfortunately. I'm not a fan of this. Before we jump into today's video, I forgot to mention to y'all, I do have a custom cage getting built in the car within the next month or so. It's gonna be painted, the whole nine's gonna be done. And I kind of want to talk about before, like the whole topic of this video, show you guys that and how I was gonna do that. So I have something crazy planned. Um, I've actually found one person on YouTube that's kind of done something close to what I'm doing. And I don't want to leak it yet. I do not want to leak it, but these welds are going to be sitting in the back of the car and let me show you where. So you might be thinking, why are the welds going in the back of the car? As you guys can see, I got the rear seat deleting the car. This is coming out. These welds are actually going to sit right here. One is going to sit right here and one is going to sit right there on that side. It's going to be a tight fit. Um, it's something I've never, ever seen before. If you guys have taken out your back seats, you guys know there is that little dip. So the wheel can kind of sit right in that dip, but I'm getting a bar put all the way from the bottom, all the way around the top, just to brace the roof line, just in case something crazy happens. And it's gonna be like an L-shaped bracket that is gonna stick out with the spokes, like with five, uh, five lugs, or I mean, five freaking i don't know i can't think of it right now but you know just like the regular piece i don't know why i can't think of it i'm, I'm it's mental lockup right now but it's going to stick out like this with the five things and i'm going to slide the wheel on and i'm going to be able to use these lugs to tighten them on so the welds are actually going to be located right in the back of the car and in the back i'm going to probably put a x brace from the back all the way across the back to stiffen up the whole like chassis of the car which should make the car handle a lot better these cars don't have uh, crazy flex um, if you guys seen like the old bosses back in the day, like the Laguna Sega ones that came with that big X brace. So I'm thinking about putting an X brace there and maybe a custom like welded piece in the back. That's going to be pretty sick. It's something different. No one has ever done that before. But for what I have planned to do, um, it is going to work out perfect. Little update on the website. Website is coming along. Be patient, please. It is a lot of freaking work. I didn't know how much work I was actually getting myself into, but it is substantial amount. I actually need a little bit of help of knocking this out because I am so lost in so many areas and I've been like YouTubing, researching, trying to get everything done. It is a pain, but merch will be coming soon. Don't worry, all y'all in different states, I got you covered. The main topic of today's video is one of the like most top five questions I get asked all the time. Jake, should I go 10 speed or should I go manual? And we're gonna jump in the car, cruise around, Go pick up some breakfast probably because I'm a fat ass. And we're gonna talk about a few reasons why 10 speed over manual. And right off the bat, I can tell you 10 speed more reliable than, than the MT82. The MT82 has like a freaking class action lawsuit I've seen against it. People have made posts straight from the factory. The MT82 has been straight junk. Like they have not worked right. They just had nothing but problems. And I mean, the 10 speeds do have a fair share of problems themselves. Um, they are also hit or miss. It's just the luck of the draw nowadays, I feel like. But I do have a manual. This is a T5. This is freaking as weak as it gets for the manual transmissions. It's still good, though. I mean, the, I mean, it was stock in this car back in the day in 1992. And the car's making double the horsepower. So I am playing with fire with this car and this manual transmission. But the clutch is stout. Clutch is good. Transmission is just the weakest link on this car. But I don't race it. That was the whole point I'm trying to make. If you're planning on racing the car substantially and trying to get longevity out of it, I would say 10 speed. I see people throw twin turbo kits on the on uh, these cars, the Gen 3s, and with the 10 speed, they're making eight, nine second passes consistently all day long. And the amount of passes you could probably get out of a manual transmission versus an automatic is probably a straight quarter of the amount without breaking something and without being consistent. And unfortunately, the manual will just not, it will not last as long as an automatic. It's sad to say, I believe me, save the manuals. I freaking love manuals. They're fun, they're, they're fun in every way, but if you're looking for longevity and you like to race your car substantially, I say go automatic 10 times out of 10. Unless you're one of those guys where like, screw it, you have money, you're gonna throw a beefy trans in there, a beefy clutch and just beat the piss out of it, go for it, honestly. Before we put this cage, we do have a little bit of work upon us. We have to completely gut this interior. I mean, no carpet, no panels, no nothing. And I am a little scared to do that, so, Wish me luck on that. Let's fire this thing up. And another good thing about having an auto, 
remote start. Gotta love it. I can't wait till you guys see what I got planned. It is gonna be insane. I've been talking to Shelby about my new hood. It is coming from Shelby America. I'll give you guys that hint. And uh, not many people have it on their car. Freaking spider webs everywhere around here. Not many people have it. I yet to see a car in person with it. I've seen a couple online. It looks freaking sick, but the only problem is the Cobra Jet clearance, and we don't know if that's gonna fit. So trying to run some numbers, do some measurements. Hopefully we'll have a new hood, new wheels and tires set up front and rear. The welds are gonna be for sale, and the Rohanas are for sale. Rohana, I got another set for these, the staggered setup, which are freaking, they're, they're absolutely insane. They're probably on one of every thousand miles things you see. Not many people run these wheels, so that's freaking awesome. And these welds are the S71s. I wanna go with the S77s. I like that kind of style better. I think these are these still look good. They're clean. They're not a freaking mark really on them. And um, I don't know. I'm just super picky and I kind of want to change the whole look of the car. Um, kind of cosmetically, I have a wrap design I'm thinking about also. This car's going to be crazy. I'm, I'm not even nowhere close to being done with it. It almost looks done to some people, but I'm like, y'all have no idea what is in store for this car. Steering wheel, seats, everything. God, I mean, RIP my bank account. Let's get in. One of the things I love about the 10-speed just throw it down in sport and you're in paddle shifter mode and this car is super easy to freaking drive it's a little aggressive though sometimes hey sting gang but just like that 10 speed easy money I swear, this car just loves to be beat on and freaking driven. If it was an MT82, I really don't believe it would have last that long. They are good, don't get me wrong. I'm not here bashing the MT82s. There are a lot of them out there that have been in the nines. And there have been a lot of 10 speeds that are freaking blown up within 500 miles just from, I guess, build quality being poor. Uh, when they first came out, they were freaking, they were garbage. But here we are, 10 speed Mustang. About to flip 8,000 miles, and it has been nothing but straight beat on since day one. So, knock on some wood if you got some for me, but it's it's been pretty stout. Sometimes I feel like Ford makes things cheaper on purpose just so things break. And hear me out when I say this. I don't know why I feel like the MT82s, after like every single year, they've been getting cheaper and cheaper. And I'm pretty sure they're freaking made in China now. And you know Ford... They definitely, they definitely could put a Tremec in it. I mean, they put the Tremec in the Mach 1, no problem. And personally, I think they just want everyone to have a 10-speed. I think it's more cost-efficient. I think the 10-speeds sell a lot better. Every time I go to a lot with Mustangs or when the, mar the car market was normal, nothing but freaking 10-speeds. And I really thought Ford should offer a Performance Pack 2 for the 10-speed just because if they're pushing them more, they should at least offer better cooling mods, um, rear cooler stuff like that all in general because they only offer that for the manuals uh the bigger radiator um just stuff like that i really wish i could have got that on a 10-speed car but it wasn't available gotta get some of the lord's chicken first thing in the morning because i'm a freaking fat slob jesus that's what you cannot beat about the freaking 10-speed they just eat the only thing I can say it has its flaws. Um, I mean, I wouldn't even really give it a flaw. It's just, it doesn't have, I wish this car had a dual clutch. That is one thing. Like, I wish it had the seven speed Tremec that the GT500 had. But I know those things are pretty pricey. Don't get me wrong. I know this is a regular Mustang GT. But the one thing I do hate is just the, the jerkiness. Like, you guys saw that one shift. I mean, I know it's the line pressure's up to hold the power, and so it doesn't freaking um, slip or anything happens. It's just there to keep it moving and throw the car forward every time. But that is one thing I wish it had. I, I really do miss that about the seat. The seat was just bam, bam, bam. It was honestly like a freaking video game. But 10 speed, to me, is the way to go. But also, I freaking do love the manuals. Manuals are fun. I really just wish Ford put a better manual in just the regular Mustang GT. Because, I, I mean, Ford freaking knows. We, we beat the shit out of these cars. We run the hell out of them. They get raced. They get dogged. They get autocrossed. Like, 
that's why I think the Mustangs are still the, the better platform than anything else. You can make a drag racing car with a Mustang, you can make an autocrossing car, you can make a road course car. I mean, autocrossing, road course, same shit. But you guys know what I mean. All right, so this is how my car sounds. Headers, high flow green cats, Steeda X-Pipe, stock mufflers. Stock mufflers sound great. This is in track mode. I got a super good deal on Corsa Extremes. Drop a comment, let me know if I should do it. I don't know. I'm gonna rev it up a bit. It's in track mode, so we're gonna see how it sounds. I always thought this car sounded good, not over loud, had a nice rumble to it, but everyone is telling me go Corsa Extremes. You guys are gonna be the final judge. Gotta let the dogs inside. Go inside, go. We do. Why are you always trying to eat, bro? Get your fat ass in the house. I don't know if it's just the garage, but that was loud as shit. 4K probably peaked the mic and blew my freaking eardrum out. I wanna say this video is the benchmark for everything that is about to come with this car. It's gonna be different. I'm telling you, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Road to 100K, you guys are going to be blown away with what's about to be done to this car. This car is gonna get raced everywhere. When I tell y'all everywhere, I mean it everywhere. And I'm not afraid to do it. We're gonna run the shit out of this car. There's just a lot of things we gotta get done. Um, some cosmetically, some performance wise. I wanna keep the engine relatively stock for the most part. Uh, stock heads, stock cams, stock short block, just the intake, exhaust. Like I wanna keep the car to where majority people have it and just show them what the car can do and how tough these cars are because most people don't believe. They always give Mustangs a bad rep. They hate on them, they hate on them. So we're gonna change that today. Let's hit that subscribe button. Let's make Mustangs great again. We're gonna send it, we're gonna make this bitch ride and she's gonna be a freaking a beast when we're done with her. Everything front to back. I mean, this is gonna be crazy. And if I could just have what's in my head, throw it onto the car just like that quick, you guys would be like, damn, that bitch is hard. But time will tell, more videos to come. We'll wait and see. Hopefully you enjoyed this. It's kind of tough making winter content, but until the next one, we're going to keep the grind going. Peace.